shout out to all my patrons. Thanks a lot, guys. So we're looking at a, an Arson Guild figure here. I've tilted it over to make the cloak uh, kind of parallel to the ground for supports, just force a habit. Even just trying to do a teach a tip, I have to do that anyway. So let's just drop a bunch of supports onto the model. And this is the first way you can make the support pillow, pillar. Sorry, not pillow. So what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna pick an area of the cloak and I'm going to uh, drop a bunch of that, just drop a bunch of mediums on there. Uh, so if you're supporting an area where you have a bunch of uh, supports going in the same general spot, what you can do is the first way you make the support pillar is you just go over and click your edit button because look how much resin this is going to use. So let's join some of these up. So what we're going to do is uh, th these contact points were pretty far away. So I'm just going to drag them down so just so it's easier to see what I'm doing. Get rid of this crap. And what we're going to do is we're just going to click on the uh, pillar section and drag it right on top of the other one. Now you notice I'm not dragging 100% so it disappears into the other one perfectly. And I'll talk about that. What I wanna do is I wanna be able to see the ball clearly of, of both supports and be able to pick it out very easily. So if I need to make changes or edit it at all, I can select it easily. Also, uh, when it's like this and each, each pillar is a little bit separate, you can drag them and move them still. Whereas you'll see later, if you stack them exactly perfectly, which looks better and saves you even more resin, then you can't move them around afterwards, which are really terrible. So that's why I don't like to do that. So here I've kept it so it's a big lump, but basically uh, you could move everything. Now I tend to think that's too many. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move two of these back out and just group them together. I'll leave this little piece of lattice work there for stability. And when you do this, you have to make sure sometimes these little disks appear when you move things uh, that get left in the dust, you have to delete those. So now I've got, I made two pillars for the five supports, so that's good. Over here, I'm going to do the same basic thing. I'm going to, first I'm going to lengthen these uh, contact uh, lengths, which I should have done beforehand, but doing it now, so it's okay. Get rid of these extra crap so we can see. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, again, I'm going to drag the pillar over. Um, I'll keep that one, I guess. And Wait, why, I can't move this for some reason. Hold on, I have to lengthen this more to move it. Okay. So I'll drag that one there. I'll drag this one into it also. And again, I'm keeping the three a little bit separate so I can uh, see the, the pillar still of each one separately and the ball quite easily. And then for these three, I'll do the same thing. So I'll drag it almost on top of each other. And I'm gonna leave again, this, this lattice uh, work between them is a strengthening support. So I'm gonna leave that. And th that way it's less likely either of those pillars will fail. So now we've changed what was 11 different pillars uh, into four. So that saves some resin. Now, the other way to do this is you see that each, uh, the, the pillar has angles, planes. So just go down one plane and just click to add a support, move up a little bit, click, move up a little bit, click, move up a little bit, click, move up a little bit, click. Now you've got uh, four supports there that are perfectly stacked. This is what I, Honestly, I don't really like this in most situations. And, and again, you'll see when I go to edit it, you'll see why. So let's say I was just dragging these up here to some point you want to support, whatever. We've got five of them here, not four, as I said. Now, the problem is when they're perfectly stacked like this, it's hard to tell which ball belongs to which support. So I don't, and it's also hard to pick the ball out. You have to kind of be a little careful. So I don't like that. The other thing is now I can't now click and move this, this whole entire pillar if I want to move it. I can't. Once they're all perfectly stacked, you don't seem to be able to move them at all. Uh, unless you move one of the balls up, edit the support out, and it, it's a big pain in the butt. So that's why I don't like to perfectly stack them. The way I stack them, the first part, by dragging them almost on top of each other. That way works better for me because I can still move and separate those pillars if I need to. Uh, when they're stacked like this, also, if you need to delete a support because it's wrong, it deletes all the supports in the stack. So it's really bad. So that's why, even though I know some Patreons give out neat looking supports like this, I don't do it from the Artisan Guild because I want people to be able to edit my supports if need be. And if they're all perfectly stacked like this, you can't edit them. So in case people are wondering why I don't uh, do this strictly uh, to save you guys more resin, because I also want you to have the freedom to edit and, and not be pulling your hair out trying to edit something that's all stacked on top of each other. So that, that's basically it for today. 
I just want to let you know that if you do want to conserve resin, you can stack your supports. Now, you don't want to stack everything at once because, again, if everything's on one pillar, it's like putting all your eggs in one basket and that pillar fails somehow. Bends, warps, fails, you know, whatever happens, uh, it ruins all those supports as well. And we don't want models to fail. So use this, but use it a little bit sparingly in terms of don't, don't jeopardize the success of your model just to save some resin because a failed model obviously costs you more resin uh, than you could save. So use judiciously, but it will save you a little bit of resin. We'll make the uh, support removal also a little bit easier because you won't have a ton of lattices everywhere and a, and, and a base every, you know, every other millimeter. Uh, also makes it easier to see if anything's bonding to the model. So there are some pluses to it. But just uh, like I said, if you're doing it for home use, you know, you still want to be able to edit your supports in case you print out and you've made a mistake or you want to change something. So I do recommend don't stack exactly on top of each other. So that's it. Please like, please subscribe. Uh, watch my other vids and happy 3D printing.